Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox, this time in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We had previously been testing the Venture Star in 1.8.1. This is the standard Venture Star, not the Super Venture Star, keep that in mind. This is not the double scale version or whatever. Uh, this is just the normal-ish one. And we have been testing it out in 1.8.1, but I've decided to move to 1.12 because KOS controls the shuttle better in 1.12 during re-entry. It doesn't have as much wiggling and it seems to turn a little bit better. So I was hoping that it would do the same for Venture Star. And I've also uh, tuned the max stopping time in the KOS script uh, to hopefully help that out. And I've done some testing. We haven't landed successfully yet in 1.12, but I'm hoping this time we will. Uh, so I bet your guess is as good as mine, as usual. So I have done some testing, but I haven't gotten to the point where I was successful, but I'm close. So that's the idea. And uh, what we have here now, somebody in the comments to, uh, I think the Super Venture Star video uh, pointed out that maybe canards would not be so great because they sort of poke out of the, the envelope as far as the plasma is concerned. But then again, wings do too. Uh, so I don't know how far that goes or what kind of canards might be safe without folding them up or anything. But I decided that even though I was contemplating canards for the standard Venture Star, I would lay off of that. I already used them on the Super Venture Star and I'll just uh, keep them to that side unless I feel like we absolutely need them here. So what I've done is um, increase the max deflection on these control surfaces, size them up a little bit, size these up a little bit too in the hope that we can control it better, have better pitch control. Uh, that's our only option if we don't put canards, right? These are further back. I've uh, sort of tuned these. They only do pitch and they have 12 degrees max deflection. And uh, I've also, because we've made these bigger, moved the center of mass back a little bit uh, so that we don't have to use too much, but I don't know if it's enough. So those are the main changes. Uh, but this is 1.12, so there are other quirks, and I'll talk about them during launch. Okay, so we will use KOS for launch. That worked well enough before. Uh, well, uh, like I said, there are differences in 1.12, and I've had to change the launch script a little I keep saying Censure instead of Venture. Uh, and I've had to change the launch script because it didn't quite work out the same. And one thing we're doing is we're going steeper to avoid avoid drag which is strange because for the shuttle we have to go shallower because it experiences less drag so the spacecraft is also different in terms of the fuel capacity I increased the fuel capacity by 8% and the reason I increased the fuel capacity by 8% is because in 1.12 we have predicted residuals so 1.17% of the fuel is going to be unusable. Well, unusable by the main engines anyway. Uh, not unusable by the RCS. But in any case, we're carrying extra up. And since we're carrying extra up, we need to compensate by starting off with more. And we can't just start off with 1%. And basically, getting 1% into orbit, you need a certain amount more on the ground. And I decided 8% would be okay. So we're carrying 8% more fuel, which reduces our thrust to weight ratio because I haven't changed the engines. But we're still pretty good on the thrust to weight ratio, so I didn't mind. Uh, this is the thicker bodied version of the Venture Star, so I think it has the volume for it. And we can see how it looks. Uh, there are things I would like to touch up as far as the looks, for instance, the tiles. On the wings aren't exactly done perfectly. The tiles are supposed to be diamond shaped, so uh, the tiles in the body are basically okay. But yeah, the wings aren't lined up with the lines on the wings, if you will. Uh, it's possible I should just eliminate the white area, but it's a nice touch anyway. So we'll think about that. Uh, with procedural wings, you'll no you'll have noted that these have a more metallic texture by default. That's just a default texture uh, in. 1.8.1, the default texture was the HRSI tile texture. Now we got a little bit of wiggling here. So with the residuals, of course, the thing is, and reduced thrust weight ratio, we're a little bit tighter on getting to orbit. And of course, we've added these control surfaces in the back. 
So we're still only carrying 18 tons is what we're carrying right now in the cargo bay. It's possible this wiggling. I, I didn't lock these this time. We could have locked those. But uh, yeah, structural mass is, well, more or less what we could expect it to really be. So but we're carrying more with the control surfaces. Okay, we're wrapping up the burn here. If it thrall down, we're passing 4Gs, but not too badly at least. And it's mainly a cargo vessel, but hope to use it for crew pods. We'll see about that. But 156 by 190, no problems there. And so we'll shut down the main engines and go through various startup things. But you know, it only says 30 meters per second. So this is one of the quirks. This is one of the quirks. Um, we don't seem to have a whole lot given the residuals, right? 1.17%, but you'll see what happens. Uh, the way Mechjeb calculates the delta V given the residuals is a bit of a pain. So anyway, we'll get to that. Well, let's release the cargo first. Uh, we could bring it to a higher orbit, but for testing purposes, for now, we'll just get it to here and optimize later. RCS. It's my hope that eventually the entire thing will be op uh, automated until, except for landing. Landing I like to do myself. So it would eject the cargo, close up, time warp for a bit, or maybe just do a once around. We'll see about that. Depends on the landing site. So still 31, but let's go prograde and we'll boost it to a sort of more standard orbit for the re-entry script, which is a one and a half hour orbit, roughly 282 kilometers circular. And you'll see once I light it, once I light the OMS engines, we get 114. But there's this another catch. That 114 still doesn't count the residuals. It's just that it recalculated the residuals for these engines. And eventually we can still use the residuals as RCS propellant, which is a different thing. <laughs> we need the, of course that, that suits me fine. I, I, I like RCS propellant for re-entry. And so if we can use the residuals for that, that suits me. Uh, it's all very complicated as you can see in 1.12 when it comes to managing the delta V. But still, with 106 meters per second, that's not much for re-entry. We'll see how it does. It'll probably have to finish the re-entry burn with the RCS. Especially since I'm getting it to the standard orbit. If we were just starting at this orbit, it'd be m sort of better but I want to get it into a nice standard orbit for the calculations built into the re-entry script as inconvenient as that is. There's also some randomness when it comes to the delta V available to us. The residuals aren't constant, they're like a worst case scenario or semi worst case scenario thing. So it's complicated. I mean, in theory, of course, Venture Star isn't just one big tank. It's a whole bunch of little tanks all over the place. Right? Well, not that little, but you get the picture. The, uh, the tanks feeding these engines would be completely different from the big tanks feeding the main engines. So... But this is penalizing me for building it all into one part instead of having a whole array of different parts basically. And the residuals are based on the type of tank. So these are cryogenic tanks now. With service module tanks, the residuals are like 5%, I found out. So originally VentureStar was built with the service module tanks. But since, and that was because I could put everything in, you know, the electric charge, the food, water, and oxygen for the crude version, etc. Uh, but because it had such a high residual rate, 5%, I had to change it to cryogenic tanks. And at least this version doesn't need the food, water, and oxygen, just the electric charge. But I generally don't like to put the resources outside of the modular fuel tanks. 
But yeah, the resi residuals for the cryogenic fuel tank is just 1.17%. But it's just type of tank based. And there's no way to adjust it for the particular part, as far as I can tell. There's no way to write, okay, for this particular mod, the fuel tank needs to have this kind of residuals because it's more complicated than just one physical tank. But, I don't, we do not have that functionality as far as I could tell. It's just one global setting for everything. Okay, so this is our last orbit before re-entry. And handing it off to our re-entry script. So of course it didn't quite work out right last time. So I'm going to edit it. This is picking up from the last test I did. The last test was pretty close. We got over to Cape Canaveral. Uh, uh, close. I mean, it's like made 20 miles short of Cape Canaveral. And so I've adjusted the settings so that it gets further, but it might be too far or something like that. And it still didn't have quite enough pitch authority. So still working on that. I adjusted a few things, but I don't know if it's enough. So here it had trouble in 1.8.1 turning. And this time we're a little bit better off, hopefully. Okay. Retro burn. Uh, a little bit iffy there, but not too bad. And you can see, uh, even though it said 1.17% predicted residuals, we're below that right now as far as what's remaining. So like I said, it's complicated. That, that's not, that's like a bad case scenario kind of thing. But I really don't know what to do with that, so... Um, maybe we should reduce the body mass of this to compensate somehow. As I said before, it's already pushing it, really. Okay, two, one, and that's all we've got from the OMS engines. Now it's the RCS. Trying its hardest to bring this down. And it seems to think that the RCS has 40 meters per second to work with, but I'm not sure. Okay, should be close to wrapping up the re-entry burn here. Okay, there we go. It ended up at negative 10 kilometers. And it's time warping. Okay, we are now in the atmosphere. We will see how it does. Well, we are using quite a lot of pitch authority, so the center mass isn't quite in the right place again. It's a bit too far forward. And again, that's because we added the control surfaces, so still a bit far forward and we need to move it back a bit. We are currently holding 45 degrees pitch, which means it thinks it's going to overshoot, so I might have... Uh, overcompensated on that, we'll see. And so maybe it's using a lot of pitch because we're trying to hold 45 degrees instead of 40 degrees. 40 degrees is nominal. And it should go to 40 degrees soon because our relative altitude and relative longitude are closing in on each other. I do wonder if we're gonna run out of RCS when we don't have any more of this delta V indicated down here, even if we still have fuel. I don't know whether the RCS actually does have residuals or not. Now it feels like it's falling short a bit. We'll have to tune exactly where it expects to be. Apparently it's using the shuttle's numbers, so that's bound to be wrong. Okay, we are passing the Gulf of California. We are using more than half of our pitch authority. There's some mild overheating on the body. 
and we are getting a little bit of a bounce up here. It currently thinks that it's going too far, but it's basically on track at this point. Well, we are approaching the Gulf of Mexico, more or less on track, and I've got my answer about the zero meters per second. That doesn't seem to matter as far as the RCS is concerned. We still have probably enough left. It's not very strong RCS, all things considered. Strong enough, hopefully. Some wiggling right now, but that's sort of expected with the control surfaces and everything. Okay, well, there is the coast of Florida. And we're at 50 kilometers. It's feeling a little bit high. Trying to keep the nose up to get extra drag. Some yaw being used. And we can see Cape Canaveral over there. Well, we certainly need to slow down more. So I overcompensated for the falling short. And we're going a little bit long here. You can see it's attempting to do a bit of a roll in order to maybe bleed off extra speed, but can't do too much of that at this point. Uh, well, it's leaning as much as it possibly can right there. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Don't go too far. Uh, don't go too fast. Eek. It's rolling a little bit fast there. Oh, okay. Appreciate it's trying hard and all, but... Oh... <laughs> uh... Oh. Might want to reduce how much it's allowed to do that, but anyway. It did not kill itself yet. Oh, oh, that might be too much. That's too much. Uh, okay. Well, let's see if I can get a hold of it. Uh, not really. It did do better last time, but we didn't pass the KSC last time. So, apparently it's got some bad behavior if we pass the KSC like that. The shuttle didn't do that, so... It's a little bit puzzling it's because this is an adaptation of the shuttle script. Why this should do that. There is a mechanism in place to prevent it from turning, or it was supposed to be a mechanism in place to prevent it from turning like that when it passes the KSC, but did not seem to obey that. Well, it's not recovering. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to make some more adjustments. Okay, I have relaunched Venture Star and we are on the descent orbit, so I'm going to copy in the new version of the KOS script and see if it can do things. So. Okay, we are back in the atmosphere and things are proceeding nominally. Okay, we are at 100 kilometers. Uh, currently not using a whole lot of pitch, though it's trying to do a little bit of a roll here. And, but everything seems to be better balanced so far. Of course, we're not in the thicker part of the atmosphere yet, so it's not having too much aerodynamics going on. Interestingly, it's wiggling the pitch more now. Before it was using a lot of pitch in a steady fashion, now it's just sort of wobbling it. I wonder if... Uh, okay, no. I just wanted to make sure that the fly-by-wire was off. 
Yeah, not too sure why it's decided to be wobbly this time, but it's at least not using too much of the RCS. That's the important part. Wobbling is okay as long as it doesn't use too much repellent. Okay, we are once again over the Gulf of California, and we're back to falling short a bit, it looks like, unfortunately. And, well, the trouble with the pitch wobble is I can't tell how we're actually doing on that. Okay, we are basically on track with the west coast of Florida visible. We see Tampa Bay over there. Right now it's using a little bit more than half of the pitch. It's sort of steadied now that we're in the thicker part of the atmosphere. Still going a bit fast though. And super high. I don't uh, feel like this thing is great at turning. We've seen that before. So not great right now. Shuttle, uh, easier to turn around to head to the runway. This, not so much. With the shuttle, I wouldn't be seeing this as much of a problem right now. Okay, well, we are pitching down for normal procedures. This time, no crazy rolling. It'll hand control to me at 15 kilometers, and at that point, I don't think I can get back over there. It's more or less done what it can do, I think. And let's see, where's far? We're still going pretty fast, though. Uh, it's wiggling a lot. I'll take control and use atmospheric autopilot to try to turn here. But uh, it doesn't really like to turn much. We've been through this before. Just trying to be super careful here. If we can do a safe splashdown, that would be nice. Well, I'm pulling up as hard as I can now. Uh, I lost control. Ah. Yep, yeah, nope, that was just a loss of control. We don't have any comms anymore. I should have eliminated the comms thing. It still doesn't feel great though. Okay, well, we've got the plus side of having the consistent results that KOS can provide, but boy do I want a canard. <laughs> uh, and, and we're closer to the KSC, but, uh, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't know if we can avoid a canard, but there's, there are objections to the canard business, but I think we might need one. There's just no way that the one I've said this before, but there's no way that the stuff in the back can do enough because it's too close to the center of mass. Uh, well, anyway, so testing continues and now we're in 1.12, a totally different business, and I will continue working on it. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.